lovely to be with you again. Today we're going to uh, listen to the Ganesha Atavashisha and then uh, Sri Saraswati Puja talk from 1983 titled The Basis of Saraswati is Creativity which is Love. But first let's collectively bow down together in front of Sri Mataji, Reza Kundalini and put ourselves into Bandhan. Jai
all kinds of creative action takes place. You see how Lord Vai has love for me. And in this place you all also got new ideas of creating a beautiful thing. And as love will increase, your creativity will develop. So the basis of all creativity of Saraswati is love. If there is no love, there is no creativity. It's even in the deeper sense, if you see, people who have created all the scientific things are also out of love for the masses, not for themselves. Nobody has produced anything for themselves. If they make something for themselves, it has to be come for universal use 
otherwise it has no meaning. Even if you say atom bomb and all these things are created from science, they are also very protective. If they had not created those, people would not have taken out their minds from war. Now nobody can think of having a big war. Of course they are having cold wars, but that also will gradually stop when they will be fed up of it. So all the activity on the right hand side of Saraswati basically has to end up in love, starts with love and ends up in love. Whichever does not end up in love, coils up and finishes up. It just disappears. So you can see that even matter, which is not used for love, just finishes up. The basis has to be love. Otherwise, all such matter that we create, which has angularity, which is not fitting into the mass media, which is not appealing to the masses, of course it takes time. We have seen that it takes time. But it does, has that tendency always to disappear in the thin air as soon as you find it does not appeal to the masses. Now this love of that we talk of, this great love of God we talk of, we know that it for definite through vibrations. People do not have vibrations, but still they can feel the vibrations in a very unconscious way. All the great paintings of the world have vibrations. All the great creative works of the world have vibrations. Only those who have vibrations have been sustained by time, otherwise all other things are destroyed. There must have been monuments and horrible statues and horrible things that have been created long time back, but we are all destroyed by nature and they could not stand the impact of the kala, that is the destructive power of time. So all that is sustaining, all that is nurturing, all that is ennobling comes from this sense of love which is within us, very much developed, but within others also who are not yet realized. Ultimately the whole world has to realize that one has to go to that ultimate love of God, otherwise it has no meaning. Now you have seen in art people have taken to other methods of appealing to people by using cheap things and very vulgar things just to make people think that this is art. But this will all disappear. It cannot sustain the impact of the time as I told you. It cannot because the time will kill it. All these things have to disappear. And already you can see the result, how things are changing everywhere, even in the West. So there is no need to be so much disappointed with the West and to say that the Western world is a wasteland. It is going to be all right and it has to be done. Especially it has done a lot of puja of Saraswati, I should say, in the West. Much more that they have done in India because they have gone to learning, they have tried to find out so many things. But only thing they forgot that it is a goddess, goddess of learning. Everything comes from the goddess, that's what they've forgotten and that's why all the problems have been created. If there is no spirit in your learning, if there is no source of the goddess in your learning, then it is absolutely useless. If they have realized that there is the spirit that is working it out, they would not have gone that far. This charging cable went viral and now everybody wants one. If you're tired of Apologies to everybody for that. In actual fact, at the end of this, I think we should give it a bund on that they stop intruding on mother's talks with their vile advertising. Okay. industrial revolution in a way. And to avoid all the complications of industrial revolution, you must try to know the spirit. If you do not know the spirit, you will have the same problems as, as these people have, because they are also human beings, you are also human beings. You will go the same way, at random you will run and there will be problems, the same problems as the Western people have suffered. Now, Saraswati's blessings are so many that one cannot describe in such a short time. And the Surya has given us so many powers that 
it is impossible to tell them even in one lecture, even in ten lectures. But how we go against Surya and how we go against La Saraswati while doing the worship of Saraswati is to be seen very clearly within ourselves. For example, the Western people are very fond of Surya because they have no Surya with them. But they go too far with it, as you know, and create complications within themselves of Surya. But the main thing that one has to achieve through Surya is the light within, is the light within. And if Surya chakra at the Agya level is occupied by Lord Jesus Christ, then it is even more essential that the purity of life, what we call niti, is the morality of life. The morality itself has become very much sort of an argument in the West. <coughs> People don't have any sense of absolute morality. On vibrations, of course, you know. But they have gone all against it. Those who are the worshippers of Jesus, those who are the worshippers of the Surya, of the Saraswati, have all gone against, against the powers of Surya, just disobeying it. Because you cannot be a Surya if you do not have a proper sense of morality and holiness. The Surya itself brings light. You see everything. So many qualities Surya has got. It dries up everything that is wet, dirty, filthy. It dries up all these places which create parasites. But so many parasites are created in the West. Not only parasites, but there are horrible cuts and horrible things which have come into that those countries which is supposed to be full of light. And in, the, in that darkness they exist. Darkness about their spirit, darkness about their own knowledge and darkness about love. These three things have taken over in the places where you are supposed to love light. Light doesn't mean, light doesn't mean what you see with your gross eyes. Light means from within, the light of love. That one should understand. Light of love. And it's so soothing, it's so sweet, it's so beautiful, it's so enamoring, it's so abounding that unless and until you can feel that light within it, that light which is of pure, of purity, pure relationships, pure understanding, if you can develop that kind of a light within yourself, the whole thing will be cleansed. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This is what happens to you when you are completely cleansed. The purest form of nature is within us. The purest form of nature is within us. Our chakras are made out of that purest form of nature. We are the only people who are spoiling it by our mental thinking. Again, the same Saraswati's work. We are going again Saraswati itself. Saraswati cleanses all that is impure in nature while with our brain activity we are spoiling all that. All our brain activity goes against pure intelligence. And that's what one has to understand, that this pure intelligence is not to be soiled by our thinking. Our thinking can make us so bumptious, so ego-oriented, so impure, that we can really eat the poison and say, what's wrong? Just the opposite of Saraswati. If Saraswati Vidina is within us, she gives us Subuddhi wisdom. And that's why to worship Saraswati, to worship Surya, we must have that clear vision as to what we have to be, what we are doing, what filth we are living in, what our mind is getting into. After all, we are here for emancipation and not for just pampering our ego and living with our filth that is with us. So this life should come within us and we should try to rise above 
our own mental filth which is being created around us. Apart from that, you have to go higher and understand that there is within us a thing called ego. And this ego is false, absolute false. You do not do anything. Actually, when you turn your eyes here and there, when your attention is here and there, it's nothing but your ego is trying to overpower it. But actually ego is an absolute falsehood because there's only one ego and that is of God Almighty, Mahat Ahankara. There is no really any ego that exists. It's a myth. It's a very big myth because if you start thinking, you are doing everything, you are doing this, you are doing that, which you are not doing, then this nonsensical ego comes in and you start working it out. It can project in every direction. When it projects forward, it overpowers others, it tries to dominate others, tries to uh, kill others, becomes cruel. When it moves right to right side, it becomes supra-conscious. It starts seeing things which are absurd, which are foolish, which are stupid. When it moves left side, <coughs> then it starts uh, talking, uh, I mean seeing things, uh, yourself as a big man, as a big uh, Christ or uh, as a big uh, Devi or something, they are Adi Gurus and I am very great personality, that's left side. When it moves backwards, that's the dangerous one. When people uh, become gurus which are uh, ruining other people. So when the ego moves backwards, then they become gurus, they themselves have lots of defects in themselves and they try to pull people into those horrible stuff which is described as absolute narka. That's how is the movement of ego on all the sides. Now when people try to use their right Vishuddhi, that is to talk about themselves, is the worst of all. Whatever type of ego you may have, if you start boasting about it and talking about it, then it encircles, thickens the walls of ego so much that it is impossible to penetrate into that because that such a person is completely satisfied with himself and he believes that he is true. And once he starts believing into a nonsense like that, is an impossibility, is an impossibility to penetrate. So when you boast, about these things, or you talk big, be careful. You see, you know what I am, but how many times do I say I am that? Even if I say once, it makes tremendous vibrations for you. But how many times do I say so? At the most, if you say something, I say to him, yes, but I don't say that. If you say, if I say it loudly, I don't know what may happen, the whole thing might be blasted with you. So one has to understand that Mahat Ahankara is the one that acts, that works, that really. Sometimes I shout at you, immediately all the boots run away. Just once I shout, yesterday you saw all the boots that were coughing, they all ran. Yesterday just I stopped. So you should understand that now as you have realized souls, you can also do the soul. Use your right Vishuddhi to shout at yourself, now will you please stop boasting, will you stop talking all this nonsense, will you stop showing off? Then it will stop. Now this thickening takes place by people who really are active, who want to do something about it. Not that they are not active, they want to do it. But they know only one way is to act through talk. They don't understand that there are inner ways by which you control it much more. Because they don't want to take to that, they take to this talking. And once they take to talking and they talk about it, the whole power flows up. But if they do not talk about it and keep it within themselves, it's all right, you can tell me about your experiences or anything, but if you start telling others and talking about it too much, then the powers that you have got will be all disappearing gradually from you and you will just come down to absolutely lowest level. So one should not too much talk that I have this power, I have this power, or I see this, or I do this, which is a very wrong thing. I warn you, don't try to show off. Ah, you can talk about my powers, it's all right, but don't try to talk about your powers. 
when it comes of course to talk to somebody who is a negative person or to tell somebody then you should say that we not i we have some of us have felt this power within us we have seen people it may be you only but you need not say i have what you have to say we then you become the mahatanka when you say we yes some of us we too like in vegar's book also i made it to, i saw to it that he should not have many eyes but he should have we we think we do we means the whole collective being the whole collective organism living organism of sajuki so you should say yes some of us have got that means you put yourself down but put all others above you say yes some of us have i know some people have this that's the way one should do it because if you have to overpower your ego you must allow it to spread into everybody as that's how you will make it perfectly all right make it spread we all sajuki we all but that pride is not there i have seen that pride is not there still it is very individualistic uh, we if you start thinking we sajuki then what happens that you become one person one organization but the person we look down upon other people we we'll see that this person is low that person is high that person is there but he will not think we the sajuki how beautiful we are we the body of sajuki how beautiful we are so always think in the in the words of we so your ego will become much less much less much less and the same ego which looks so funny and absurd will form tomorrow the ekadasha we'll continue in a silent meditation
Joshua Matagi. May I this day be what you'd have me be. May I this day say what you'd have me say. May I this day be part and parcel of the whole. May my thoughts be of a realised soul. May I this day have love for all mankind. Shri Mother, be in my heart and in my mind. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. The vibrations were just so strong. It's always a great way to start the day like this. When you're ready to finish up, please bow down in front of Shamataji, raise your kundalini and put yourself into bandhan. Um, just before we say goodbye, though, if we could all just put into bandhan in our own words, um, about this advertising that keeps popping up during Shamataji's talks. Um, I just feel that it's so wrong. And um, I'll leave it up to you to word it how you feel. But if we could just all bund on that, I think it would be the right thing to do. So have a wonderful day ahead, everybody. Jai Shamataji. Thank you.